When I hear the term art style, it's kind of one of those vague art words that you know people throw around a lot. And to me, it's very vague. I view art style as being very subjective, but at the same time, I view it as being everything. But first, this video is brought to you by one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the most immersive experiences you'll find on a smartphone, even when compared to the biggest PC and console titles. The best part? It's free! Raid has all the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title, like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, it's amazing what mobile graphics has come to, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. Almost 10 million people have downloaded the game in like 3 months. I really like what I see, as some of you guys know, I've been trying to get more into RPGs, and so far so good, Raid has been swell. But you don't have to take my word for it, there are over 200,000 reviews, you can go check it out. And if you're new to RPGs like myself, Raid especially has a really good tutorial guide to ease you into the game. And it's free, so if you want to support this channel, please use my link in the description and get 50,000 silver, as well as a free Epic Champion as part of the new player program, along with the other awesome rewards that new players get. Now, back to art styles. I believe art styles can also be an artistic voice used to recognize you. People on the surface level boil that down to, I don't know, drawing anime eyes and use that to identify who the artist is or whatever. But art style to me is more than that. Art style is how you draw or produce eyes, noses, mouths, body proportions, trees, the techniques that you use. Is it yours completely? Is it a com combination of your influences or whatever? The tools you use, the particular tools. Is it something you've seen before? Is it something you've completely made from scratch? It's your complete approach, how you draw hairs, your line work, your mouth, body shape, simplicity of your art style or the complexity, coloring, how you shade, how you express certain illustrations, the way you produce it from start to finito, how your brain works and what makes you unique. And everybody has an art style that is original. As a black kid statement, that is true. However, there is some context missing and that is where I believe that nothing including art style, is 100% original and 0% original. You can have something that's in the 99s or something in the 1s. How you judge what is original and what isn't is subjective as well. I may think the art style for One Piece is very, very original, and somebody might come in and say, all right, maybe it's original, but maybe I'm giving it more of a 50%, and the other person can come and give it maybe a 70, someone can give it a 90. That is subjective. What isn't subjective, in my view, is that it's 100% original or 0% original. Nothing is to that extreme, including art style. And you know, art style could include the way you make music or the way you write scripts for movies or the way you do absolutely anything. It's not, it's, it's not just, visual arts. And also you have to factor in that people, there are people out there who don't care about originality as much. So to me, the art style conversation kind of jumps into the originality conversation at least a little bit. So it includes everything. I always give the Naruto and Harry Potter example all the time. Naruto and Harry Potter, both original entities, but they have things that kind of are similar with one another. And Harry Potter being older than Naruto, even if it's just a little bit, you can draw some comparisons to where maybe to you from a subjective standpoint, Naruto might take off some originality points. On a very superficial level, it's often said that Naruto is Harry Potter meets ninjas. That's on a very surface level. But even some key storyline plots within the series are very similar. So for instance, Orochimaru and Voldemort both snake guys, both pale skin, pet snakes, want to live forever, die and come back all the time, need some kid to come back each time or need some kid to live forever, have a scar on that kid that kind of ignites anytime they're in close proximity with that kid. That kid is connected to them on so many levels. That kid has two other friends in some kind of academy that teaches some kind of craft the list goes on, you can go on and on and on. Like they even look alike, sound alike, have minions that do their bidding, very hypnotic. It's crazy. You used to go to the same school as the kid that's currently going to that school, is some kind of important figure in that school. Everybody in the school thought they would grow up to be, you know, great figures, but unfortunately they grew up to be great figures on the evil side. They have their own friends that are still tied to the school. I could keep going, but that doesn't mean Naruto is not original for having stuff like that in there. 
it's just you know it draws similarities to other things and so if you want to take off originality points for that you can do that the same thing applies to art styles and to every tiny detail of the art style whatever it is there are other examples Eisen and Superman Lady Gaga and Madonna the list goes on I think that every style is different even when you're trying to copy a style right you don't copy it exactly so yes your originality points would be like really really low but it's not the exact same like there's always something you're missing or maybe you just didn't do exactly as the other person even the mere fact that you are not that person to me what quite ex while it's extreme but to me makes it original in its own right that it wasn't done by that person. All styles are different, same way you're different compared to anybody else. Also, styles can change over time or evolve order over time and they can be used to represent you and your growth in any way. Go look at your favorite art style five years ago and then compare it to now. Most likely, you're going to see improvement, which can be subjective. I've seen things where people will compare their art now to their art from before, and maybe the difference is not too much, or there is a difference, but it's one of those things where you might actually prefer what it looked like before. Most of the improvements really come from maybe the artist growing on other levels, say maybe using better tools, using better techniques, and then just delivering on a more professional standpoint. But overall, uh, improvements can be subjective but let's say the creator sees it as improvement so let's just go with that for now even though it is subjective another thing you might be able to notice is evolution maybe the creator drew something a certain way before and it has slightly tweaked it now maybe along the years it's gotten influenced by other creators and that has influenced his or her work and now you can see it so for instance i used to draw trees a certain way before i used to draw the sky a certain way before but over time I've tweaked it a bit. I used to shade a certain way before under the neck, and now I've tweaked it a little bit. And, and those are like very, very minor examples. Sometimes you can go on the major scale. So before I used the G Pen a whole lot, and now recently I've been kind of using the Sakura Micron inking pen. So that's more evolution on a tool level. Evolution is just really change. So it's some kind of change, whether it be gradual or not, some kind of change where the art looked a certain way or felt a certain way or was consumed a certain way uh, compared to how it's consumed now. You can find this when comparing the first pages of, say, Bleach to the pages of Bleach, at least before Bleach ended. You compare it to the first pages of One Piece to how One Piece looks now. You can compare it to the first pages of Hunter x Hunter to how they look now. There is always some kind of evolution and that happens gradually. And sometimes it can happen subconsciously, especially when you are consuming media, all kinds of media, and it's influencing your work sometimes purposely and sometimes subconsciously. Sometimes you just gotta let the work do what it do, innit? I'll have other videos that touch a little more on the evolution of a style. The bottom line takeaway from this video that I want you guys to have chill in your scalp as you know someone who creates comics from my perspective, art style is literally everything. Whatever you're thinking right now, it's that as well. It's definitely not just the basic stuff like you know how you draw nostrils or how you draw hair or do you put the lines in the hair or do you just leave it flat or you know it's it's more than that how you color like how to color in photoshop there's several digital artists out there online all talented all have professional work but if you notice they all use photoshop differently because they all have different styles different styles of pro producing the art even if it's the same like character they're drawing even if it's the same you know anime manga style or if it's something realistic it's all rendered differently or they're using different techniques whatever works for them whatever they whatever they feel is the best approach they do because they all have different styles again you know to a degree similar because they're all maybe using photoshop or they're all using the same software or you know they all use the same techniques here and there for certain parts of the illustration but you can clearly hear their unique voice in each of your illustrations hopefully I do the same I'd say it's best to always try to have a style that's unique to you where you have your own unique voice but don't try to force it and allow it develop over time while being honest with yourself 
in its development phase. Visually, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Here you can actually see me illustrating one of the covers for Apple Black Volume 3. For those who don't know, I'm the creator of Apple Black, published and serialized on Saturday AM. You can read the first six chapters for free. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. Volume 1 and Volume 2 are out. You can check out Saturday AM, which is a digital uh, diverse anthology manga magazine, kind of like Shonen Jump. Volume 3 is on the way and that's what I'm working on right here. You can see I used uh, the microns in my deleter paper, drew the characters, and now I'm rendering in Photoshop. I'm actually experimenting with this coloring technique. I actually don't color things this way. I just thought, you know, it'll be nice to try something new and see what else I can do rather than just staying in my comfort zone. And usually, once you come out of your comfort zone, every once in a while, your style evolves. And let's do a little social experiment here. Leave in the comments what your favorite manga or anime art styles are before you read any comments. Please don't forget to text to smash that like button and subscribe button because in a future video I'm going to be going over how I found my art style and I'll be doing an art style breakdown of mine, at least when it comes to all the anime, manga, comic type stuff. And don't forget to hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. These are my characters Neon and Lily, Neon in front, Lily behind, going ham in Volume 3. Hope you guys stay tuned for when that drops. Check me out on all my social media. Again, it will all be linked in the description below. And a big shout out to all my patrons who also make these videos possible. Check out some of the other cool videos I already have. It's White Manga. It's been swell. And I'm out of here.